Hey folks, I've got a little bit of the sniffles this week, you know, changing to fall allergies, so keeps ruining my takes, so this is probably the best one we're going to get and we'll just have to live with it. It's terror time again, and my preferred pumpkin spice is everybody's favorite mystery-solving cartoon sidekick to a gang of teens from the early 70s. No. No. Definitely no. That's right, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo seeps into my consciousness so strongly this time of year that I recently saw this dude on my local news wanted for indecent exposure, and all I could think of was... Raggy. So if you're new here, I mostly talk about philosophy and theology, and increasingly about how those ideas manifest themselves in popular media. But I do have a real job, and in that job I work in a lab that studies the paleontology of the Ice Age. This will be relevant momentarily. I have a separate channel for content related to my academic research, but here's a link to my doctoral dissertation research proposal if you're interested in that sort of stuff. Scooby-Doo has always had an interesting grasp on paleontology, like the backstory of the pterodactyl ghost from season 2 of The Scooby-Doo Show is said to have evolved anthropomorphic characteristics. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but humans are not very aerodynamic. Uh, Probably the best-known Scooby-Doo entry to feature dinosaurs is the movie, uh, 2011 I believe, Legend of the Phantasaur. If for no other reason, it's the source of the Ultra Instinct Shaggy meme. Velociraptors, for one, did not live in North America. Velociraptor Mongoliensis. Mongolian cis. They lived they lived in Mongolia. And even though North America did have several species of raptors, the Dromaeosauridae, like Utah Raptor, Archaeoraptor, and Deinonychus, they were all heavily feathered and, and not one of them had horns. But on September 23rd, 1978, season three, episode three of the Scooby-Doo show featured this monster. The Snow Beast. And yeah, it turns out to have been a giant mech piloted by oil smugglers. But that's not what we're here to talk about. The snow beast bears a remarkable resemblance to a real dinosaur, Eutyrannus, a large feathered tyrannosaurid living in areas with cold and snowy winters. Now, what's interesting about this monster's similarity to Eutyrannus is that Eutyrannus wasn't discovered until 2012 by Hugh and colleagues. 34 years after this episode aired. Now, if you're familiar at all with the history of dinosaur paleontology, you may know that the dinosaur renaissance was approaching about 10 years old when this episode aired, so it was technically possible for warm-blooded dinosaurs at the very least to have been knowable. But the dinosaur renaissance was mostly a private matter among scientists, and not well known among the general public until, well, Well, until really Jurassic Park, but but charitably the late 80s and early 90s. Originally, I thought it might just have been that furry dinosaurs are cool, a cool monster design, and nature is just cool like that. But the Snow Beast's entry on the Scooby-Doo wiki mentioned a possible inspiration in the 1908 sci-fi horror story The Monster of Partridge Creek by Georges Dupuy. I'm not sure if I pronounced that remotely correctly, it's French. The story describes an encounter with a furry dinosaur-like creature in the Yukon Territory, which is consistent with the dialogue in the episode about the snow beast being part of Inuit legend. This is the passage from the story, linked below, that describes the Partridge Creek monster. Though, warning, it contains some older language that some people might find offensive. Talking of ferocious animals, will you believe me when I tell you that ten of my Indians and myself saw again, on Christmas Eve, that horrible beast of Partridge Creek, passing like a whirlwind over the frozen surface of the river, breaking off with its hind feet enormous blocks of ice from the rough surface. His fur was covered in hoarfrost, and his little eyes gleamed like fire in the twilight. The beast held in his jaws something which seemed to me to be a caribou. It was moving a rate of more than 10 miles an hour. The temperature that day was 45 degrees below zero. At the corner of the cutoff, it disappeared. Of course, I think this just pushes the rule of cool back a step onto Georges Dupuy, since, you know, this thing is far from a plausible cryptid. But I think the idea of a furry dinosaur does make a kind of intuitive ecological sense, right? Dinosaurs being the most dominant land animals of the Mesozoic, 
must have occupied some colder niches. Admittedly, dinosaurs are not my area of expertise. Uh, the only dinosaur I've worked with at all is Philophysis, the Deinonychus of the Late Triassic, because their fossils are common in my area and my department has several fossil footprint specimens. But if there's one thing all paleontologists can agree on, it's that dinosaurs are cool, even if we don't work with them. One more thing before we go, and I do know that today has been a short one, but you got the Karate Kid one earlier this week. Did you know that Scooby-Doo is named after the Frank Sinatra song, Strangers in the Night? Yeah. At the end of the song, Frank scats, Doobie Dooby Doo, which inspired Scooby-Doo's name. I'm an amateur musician. I wrote the intro theme for this video, in fact. Uh, I mostly work in different subgenres of industrial music, mostly industrial black metal. Some of my older music is on this channel, but most of it is on my third dedicated music channel. I recently did a cover of Strangers in the Night, which referenced this fact, uh, as an industrial funk song, as funk was a major influence on industrial and it fits the 1970s timeline. Though I still use my black metal demon voice. You may have noticed some funky music running onto this video. This track contains two musical references to Scooby-Doo lore. One I think is rather obvious, but the other one's a deep cut. If you can guess either, leave it as a comment, and if you're the first one to do so, I'll shout you out in my next Scooby-Doo video, which should be coming out in a week or two. That's all for now, folks. Enjoy your fall. Bye-bye.